Welcome back to Cypress Academy. This is Wicked Wi-Fi 101. This time, we're going to use the I2C master interface to talk to an I2C slave. The base kit does not have any I2C slaves, so we're going to use the shield board that has the PSOC analog coprocessor programmed as an I2C slave at address hex 42. The PSOC connects to the analog sensors that measure temperature, humidity, ambient light, as well as the potentiometer. The PSOC measures the sensors and converts the values into a digital format, which is stored in the I2C registers. These values will be read from the baseboard and then displayed to the terminal window. The I2C register map for the PSOC has temperature stored starting at an offset address of hex 7, followed by humidity, ambient light, the potentiometer voltage. Each value is stored as a floating point value, that is, four bytes each. First, let's copy 05 underscore interrupt to 07 underscore I2C read and update all of the files as necessary. You know, the make file, the make target, those things. In 07 underscore I2C read dot C, we will do the following. We'll use a button interrupt to set a flag indicating that the I2C data should be read from the PSOC and then displayed on the UART. Set up an I2C structure containing the I2C block to use. In this case, it is wicked underscore I2C underscore two. The I2C address, in this case, hex 42, the address width, and the speed. Initialize the I2C block with the configuration that we created. Use wicked underscore I2C underscore write to send a value of seven to the slave. This is used to set the register offset to the location of the temperature measurement value. This offset will be used by the PSOC during the I2C read operations to specify which data to return. In the main loop, whenever the button is pressed, we use wicked underscore I2C underscore read to read the values and then display them to the terminal window. Each I2C read will be reading 16 bytes, four bytes each for temperature, humidity, ambient light, and pot voltage. Let's program the board with this firmware and observe what happens on the terminal window when we push the button. At this point, we've experimented with a lot of different ways that GPIOs can be used to communicate with the outside world. In the next set of videos, we'll talk about using the RTOS functions to control more complex firmware before moving on to the Wi-Fi connectivity. You can post your comments, questions in our Wi-Fi developer community. Or as always, you're welcome to email me at alan underscore hawes at cypress.com or tweet me at askiotexpert. Thank you.